Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zimbi. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at the new things in ZimCat 01. We're going to look at the generator. Yay, finally. I think it's my fave. We've seen bubblings on the connectors, on the flipper, and on ZimSocket. Oh, which is also my fave. And then beyond that is the updates for ZimCat 0. Zero. So we're looking at zero one now, and we've arrived at the generator. Oh yeah, the generator for generative art. So let's take a look. Ooh, rings with a series of colors, and we've slowed that one down a bit too. You see how that's going a bit slower than this first one, which is faster. Now let's see another one. We and we can press on the screen or hit the, the space bar to pause this if we want. And we can let it uh, go on. These are also draggable. And we now uh, we're generating that, but on the right hand side are the same things but stamped immediately. Cool, huh? So let's see this one generate. And it's going in, in reverse. And there we're passing in for the fill color. We pass in an array of colors. Uh, well, of gray shades, I guess. And look at that. It just picks randomly from the array. This one, we pass in a series of colors. And it's picking those colors in series. So we're making use of the Zim V values here with the generator as well. Whoa. So this is uh, generating based on scale and I guess a bit of rotation as well. Isn't that cool? So I don't know if you noticed when I picked this up, it's it's gone beyond the screen there. Uh, in this case right here, I think it's this one. Let, let's let it go. When we pick this one up, you'll see that it is cached at the corners. So this whole shape is, is as it draws, it's being cached, which means it's one image. And we've chosen the screen size as the size to limit that to. You could choose a larger size or you could not cache it. So this one right here is not cached. And there's the caching helps performance, perhaps, uh, if you're going to pick up something and drag it after, etc. We just did that one to show you. You don't always need to. Now here we're drawing a curve. So each time we generate, we, we generate a curve and we've got a series of colors as well. And we're also toggling the color uh, dynamically as we go to make this, this pattern. And here, instead of starting in the middle and uh, rotating, we're, we've moved to the left-hand corner and we're drawing a grid. And this last one, we're generating a more complex shape each time, well, lines, each time like that. In the fourth time, one, two, three, the fourth time, we do something different, the fifth and sixth time. Once it's complete, we then put a blob at the points. Can you believe it? So that's a blob at the points, and we can change the, uh, we can change the stroke types or even uh, add a line. And so this is a Zim blob placed on top of um, the generative art points. On the right hand side, we can go through and stamp these. So there's two different types. There's the draw function, and then there's a stamp function. And the code inside is the same. Isn't that cool? So if you do the stamp, it just makes it all at once. If you do the draw, it, it animates it. And you can adjust the speed that that will happen. Here is neither using a stamp nor a draw. This is right in a, a setup function. And we're doing a recursive algorithm here, or a function here to build this for us, this traditional tree that is uh, like a fractal tree. All right, let's go in and take a look at some of the code. Does that sound fun? And this is at zimjs.com slash cat slash generator dot HTML, or you can find it by clicking on the cat there. Right. Before we go in and take a look at the generator code, or the, the code that made that, let's just do a simple generator together here. Oh, we're in uh, cat01. We come on down to a template, which can be found on the code page. And we want to make, I'll just make that a bit bigger for you. We want to make a, a var g for generator equals a new generator, like so. 
and we can go directly there's some parameters to set like uh, the fill color and the line color and, and then there's what function to call if we want to draw so we'll go directly to that one draw colon gen so we'll call the function called gen like that so that's a callback function there's also a stamp so we'll show you that in just a bit so then we make that function function gen and inside we can do something like draw a line so on the generator that we made we're drawing a line and we can make this line start at position 10 and 0 and we'll make it I don't know 50 long or 50 wide and um, 0 in height Oops. <laughs> 0 in height so this is the x and y starting point of the line the, the length of the line going in the X and the, uh, well, I, I, get, I guess the, the position, the X position of the end of the line and the Y position of the end of the line. So what this will do is for a thousand times, the default is a thousand times, a thousand times it will draw a line starting 10 pixels from where it finished or where it ended. So it's going to start in the center. Uh, we've started the, the generator to start in the center, so it's going to move 10 pixels. It's going to draw a line for 50, and then it will end. And then next time it loops around, it will draw another line 10 pixels from where the last line ended. So let's have a look and see. Can you imagine what that's going to look like? So there's our first line, and then it moved over 10, and it drew a thousand lines going off to the right. What if we curve that? Let's go at zero so we won't move the line any. We've got 50 and we will dot rotate this 30 degrees. Can you imagine what's going to happen? It's going to draw a line, get to the end of it, then it's going to like spin the canvas right there. It's like, or, well, not the canvas, the, the generator shape that, that's called drawing. Uh, let's go shape, I guess. It's going to spin that and it's going to um, go. 30 degrees from there. So you ready? And it keeps going around. So this thousand times it's drawing on top and you can start seeing that gets a little crumbly. So it drew a line, it rotated 30, drew a line, rotated 30, drew a line. And it ended up coming back on itself. But you can do some wild things like what if we just rotated, we can keep a count in here, count or I or whichever one we want. And we can go count so as that gets bigger, count times two maybe. So let's see what happens if we keep increasing the rotational size as we, as we go. Whoa, <laughs> did you expect that? I, I didn't expect that. So it started off really small rotation, but then the rotation gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Finally in here, it's like rotating 360, 362, 360. No, so it will never do that. It, I think it goes around to zero again. So perhaps that's why. Um, but anyway, when it starts getting smaller, it ends up coming back or in the negative. I don't know what it is in the negative. It comes back and into here and then it wings back around a thousand times. So uh, marvelous. Now what if we didn't want that? Let's just rotate it, I don't know, five degrees. And what if we wanted to draw a line from the middle and then just keep on drawing the line from the middle and so rotate spokes in a sense. Well what we can do is we can use a push and pop and this came from processing a push will remember the current state of the uh, the current rotation, the current scale, all the current transformations. And then dot pop will put it back there. So we're remembering it here at the beginning. Well, it doesn't have to be at the beginning, but in this case, we're remembering it here at the beginning. We're drawing a line 50, and then we're going back to the beginning and then rotating and doing it all over again. And here's what that looks like. So you see that keeps on spinning around like that, drawing on top of itself a thousand times. Well, if you want to avoid that, you can say max count colon 360 degrees, for instance, divided by five is probably the easiest way to handle that. So if we're rotating at five degrees each time, 
that's a full circle. So let's see what that looks like. Boop. And then it stops. As a matter of fact, let's, uh, what happens, oh, what, would, what would happen if we went 100? We'll call that 150. So if we moved over 100 and then drew the line from 150 to zero, what would we get? Cool, huh? So it moves it over 100, draws a line 150. Then it goes back to the beginning because of the pop. It rotates and draws at the next rotation, it draws another line. So that is generally what we're doing there. And of course, we can add a stroke and a color to get all you know beautiful. <laughs> and we can also, instead of drawing lines, we can draw rectangles, we can draw ovals, polygons or poly, uh, different um, curves, Bezier curves. Now, in the past, we've done something like this, but uh, when we do draw into a shape, we do for a rectangle, we have the X and Y and it's annoying. And that's one of the things Zim did is whenever we draw a rectangle, now a Zim rectangle, we got rid of the X and Y because we can handle that in other manners, like with X and Y properties or with a pose or a loke or center, etc. So when we draw a rectangle in Zim, we usually just say start with the width and the height. We considered taking away the X and Y for a line, taking away the X and a Y for a rectangle. All these things have the X and Y to start because there is a dot translate, which is like the Zim move, which would translate that 100 each time. We could just start at zero. So in other words, we don't really need those. We could have just done that. So it is handy sometimes to have an X and Y, but I would say three quarters of the time, I don't want an X and Y, I just want to draw my bloody rectangle. Why do I have to put zero, zero here? <laughs> but we kept it with the zero, zero there just to be in parity or the same as, um, as processing. So people who are used to processing would come here and hopefully find similar things so they'd be able to operate. Now, <laughs> when we realized what processing was doing, it was like, Oh, that's handy because to do this inside of a shape in Zim with absolute positions would mean we'd have to use sines and cosines and stuff like that. So rather than using sines and cosines, we um, realized what processing was doing is like, okay, well, we can do that. And we coded that in one night and it's about a hundred lines of code. <laughs> so to convert from absolute drawing into relative drawing was just one night of code and it's not all that much code. It's like, oh my God, even that push and pop is just a, it's just a bloody remembering of the, to the transformations and, and that's it. I mean, a touch of it's a little, gets a little bit complicated, but uh, it's like, oh my gosh, that's what processing has been doing all along. Uh, head plant kind of thing. So there you go. We now have a generator. Processing has just removed the need for a G and they just run these commands. I don't know if they're chainable, but they just run these commands loose like this. But uh, we have chainable methods that, that we put on and we put that on the generator. Now, there's various advantages to that. For instance, um, there, well, Okay, we'll leave it at that. We can say g.drag. Actually, it's on the drawing. So there's a drawing property. When we do transformations, uh, we're using a matrix. So it's matrix calculations in the back. In CreateJS, when you use matrices, it, it's, it's one or the other. Then you don't get to use X and Ys. Uh, all the transforms have been turned into matrix calculations and you have to continue on with those. So what we've done is put the result into a container called drawing g.drawing, so the generator's drawing container is what you would then drag, for instance, or move about, or animate afterwards, or fade out, fade in, use as an asset. Um, so these drawings can be used as an asset. I'll show you that in just a second, but for now, let's, um, let's try this. This might be a little bit hard because we're gonna have to pick up this, the skinny thing. That can be uh, changed, so we could expand that and then we could pick up the whole thing. So it would be g.expand. Expand automatically adds a 20 pixels, so if you just want it right at the edge of what we've, what we've got there, then it would be like so. So now you can see that we can pick it up here and even here in the corner as well, or we can make thicker lines, what have you. 
So do you see what I mean by that being handy? Now, if you don't want to wait it to generate, if you don't want to wait for it to generate, you just say stamp here. I don't know if processing has this, but stamp is just a way that we can avoid um, the time that it takes <laughs> to do that. <coughs> so we refresh, and there it is stamped. Refresh. Stamped right away. So that's what we were doing with the examples that we're going to take a look at here. Oh, excuse me, I just got a spittle. <coughs> oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten those chips before I started talking. I think I have a little salty spittle <coughs> in my throat now. Hopefully uh, you can forgive me. So there you go. And once again, we could animate this, or it, it's now just the same as any Zim containers and shapes and asset, uh, what have you. All right, let's go in, and now this isn't an explore, so that was all a bit of an explore. I'd love to do an explore on this. It makes sense to do one rather than just a bubbling. The bubblings are supposed to introduce you to the code. So once again, what we're looking at here, let's open in browser, what we're looking at here are all those different examples. So this, instead of a line, is a rectangle that we're rotating. And we're going to go in and see how the batch of these things were made. Okay, so that's what we're going through. I was mentioning an explore. It would be nice to explore further in how the generator works kind of from scratch because this is a whole world of processing. This is a whole world of um, thousands, if not millions, of generative art that has, has been made already. Uh, now we can do that in a very similar way here in, in Zim. So here's the generator. <clears throat> each one of these things is in a function of its own. So each of those eight things are in a function where we receive the type. So the tabs at the left and the tabs at the right. See, that's another thing. Uh, this is this is Zim. So this is what Zim can do. We have tabs in two minutes. We've got these tabs at, that are integrated into our app. They're not some stupid little HTML pull down thing up top right, which is what processing has lived with for years. And I mean, it's OK. That's the dat GUI. It's very practical, I suppose. But from a design sense, it's not very integrated. And processing really hasn't gone along very far. It's because they're using HTML components uh, as, as well, or in, in addition to the, the DAT GUI, which is HTML based. So they're using like traditional uh, HTML forms or expecting us to do that in here. And sometimes that doesn't work out. Uh, like, look, I'm dragging that over top of those things. That's because I want to. Um, if you have an HTML form, that's not going to happen. Uh, you, you're going to find that you've got access interactivity to one or the other, um, not to both. And and plus HTML forms are, I mean, you can style them and stuff, but still uh, Zim components now are just so much easier to use and position and manage than HTML forms like by, by 10, by 100. So anyway, here we are, um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go in. We're using those tabs to call either the draw or the stamp. And then down below, uh, this is us using a ternary operator to decide which one, either the draw or the stamp, will get the gen function. Isn't that great? The same function works for either draw or stamp. And so this is the setup to be able to do two different types of, of generators. We've got the max count in there so that it doesn't keep on wrapping around. And that max count is based on the five degrees of rotation of our rectangle. And you can change this up. So there's 100. So this is 100. Let's see what happens to it. Let me refresh here. Oops. Just like totally went away by, by shifting that. 100, it, it, it drew this big, huge loop of um, <laughs> a loop of, of these rectangles. So do you, do you see what we would need to do? We would have to push here, dot push, and dot pop here, dot pop. And this can get more complicated and excitingly complicated to be able to make, oh, just like wonderful, wonderful patterns. And did we mess up? Push, dot pop, oh, forgot the dot. All right, that's what I was hoping for, just to show you that we could move those over by 100, and then we, we get that. Well, once again, it's not really an explore, so why don't we stop exploring, and I'll just show you what's here, and we'll do an explore later. 
and keep on track with uh, what we've got. All right, we are then dragging the generator. We're returning that. That just has to do with so that we can, as we go from one to another, we can clear the last one. Here's our second one. In this case, we've got some circles. One of the things that we're doing is we're changing the draw count. Let's get rid of this uh, little ternary operator here. Ternary, one, two, three. It's just a conditional. If mobile is true or something's in it, then um, every two, every two generations draw something. Otherwise, every four generations draw something. Well, if we every 10 generations draw something, this is going to slow it down by 10 times. Not the first one, that's the normal speed. Here's the second one. As you can see now, it's only drawing every tenth one, so it's uh, slower than it has in the past. Bean, <laughs> says Yoda. Slower it has been. Bean, it is slower. Hmm, that's probably not right. Um, undoing. Oops, redoing that. And back down we go again. So we have a max count on there, fine. We're rotating a circle and we're using that push pop thing. If we if we didn't move the circle by 100, it would just rotate around its center. So a rectangle still top left corner, circles in the center, no point in rotating a circle. We won't see it unless we move it and we've done the push and the pop in there. The next one, we are using a series of colors. Oh, forgot to point that out. Up above, we used a series of colors, yellow, orange, and green as well. To be able to randomize that, it would be just make an array out of that, and it would then randomly use those colors. And I think you can imagine what that would look like. Isn't that amazing? So that's us setting the stroke color. You can do that with the draw or the fill color as well. So here again, we're uh, setting colors to pink, blue, or pink, purple, and blue. Um, we're using the count but creating a variable and then using that variable to change the width of a rectangle as we go. So as the count gets bigger, the rectangle size is going to get smaller. Now we didn't want it to, to be factored too much, but the, this is how you change it. Uh, you just change this number and you get a different drawing. So let's have a look at the third one here. Is it the third one? I think so. So look, there it is getting smaller and then it starts to get bigger because the rectangle, as when it goes negative, the rectangle is made as well in a, in a bigger sort of negative number. What happens if we modify that only by a little? Let's see. Let me refresh here, go to the third one. Now, as you can see, there's <laughs> hardly any difference, and here it goes into the getting smaller time, but the line thickness is so thick that it's practically filling in. And we can stamp this. If we don't want to wait, there's the stamps, remember? And there's the stamp of what that would look like. That's a thousand, it never even got to go negative, but that's a thousand lines on that. Because we didn't put a, a limit to it. Well, what if it were just leave it at the count times one, I guess, or times five? Oops, this is an explore again. And go into three. So now it goes into that mode in a faster uh, manner. So they're, they're farther apart, and we've still cached that. So we've also cached this one, whereas uh, this other one, I don't know if I mentioned that, this other one is not cached. So it'll be up to you as to whether you want to cache it or not. We just wanted to show you a cached version. Cache true right there. All right. Um, popping on down to the fourth one here. It's roughly the same, but we've got random numbers there. We're rotating in the negative. And we also told it to stop. So once, once our moderator here, which is a little bit bigger, half, half the size of the count each time, um, once that moderator is less than zero, then we're going to stop the generator. So generator.stop. You've got a bunch of different controls. Go to check the docs for various methods of the generator. Different controls to, to be able to do that as well. Pause and so forth. This next one, we are... What did this look like? We are multiplying the scale. This is the one that scales out. So nothing really fancy. But check this out. It's just scale 
1.1. This will scale it 1.1 times the current scale. Remember, that's relative. Same with rotation. We're rotating two degrees each time, more than the rotation was last time. So these are ap not absolute numbers, but each time it's going to get slightly bigger. If we make that uh, 1.5, we'll see that get bigger even faster. So there it is at a 1.1 times the size. And here it is going even faster. Now there's a lot of these. There's like a thousand getting bigger. And you can change the size of the stroke. So here's a one size stroke. Let's reduce this to 1.05 and see what it looks like. If we rotate, you want to rotate a bit more, like uh, by 10? Oh, oh, try it. Yeah, nice! Like, wow! And here is the stamp version. So not this one. There's the stamp version. Cool, huh? So that's a thousand twists of it. <laughs> Some barbed wire twist. And we haven't even added colors. So we come on down here and uh, we've got curves happening. So we're making a Bezier curve each time. We're calling the color. So we're coloring it, but just with whatever color it thinks it already is using. And that happens to be a series. So we're toggling that back and forth and calling it again so that it toggles back again. So uh, let's go in and see why we're doing that. So again, first of all, let's lock this down. We've got a series of red and white. I've chosen the HTML red rather than a Zim red. So that's a series of red and white. We Each generation will take the next color in series. But we've also, after making the Bezier pattern, which will fill itself in the color, we've then said change the fill color. And then we've drawn a circle, which will happen inside that Bezier. And that circle will be the new color. And then once that's finished, we then change the color again, and it will advance to the next color. Now, it may be, I can't remember if uh, the push remembers the current color, and therefore this, this G dot color will actually go to the next color from the current color. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember if the push and pop remember. The, I think they do remember the fill colors. But anyway, that won't affect our, our um, series, though. The series has been called, won't be stored from the push and pop. So anyway, I think you'll find that this situation was done so that we would get something that looks like this. As we draw it in white, we change the color, it becomes red. Then we go to the next one, and it becomes red because we change the color in between. We change the color in between, it comes to red, so that's why we had to do this last change of the color. If we didn't, let's see what happens. Comment that out. We refresh here, and hopefully you're doing all right out there. And that's not it, but that was exciting. And oopsies, it's a little broken, but who knows, maybe we want that. All right, so that was the going back and forth of the colors there. And number seven, we have an array of green, yellow, purple, pink, red, blue, and those. Oh, this was our big, um, right now we're going to, <coughs> we're going to make a tile in a sense from this. So the first thing we did here was do a setup. So we ran a setup function, which happens before it starts generating. And uh, setups isn't as important as it is in processing. In processing, you don't have anything ahead of time, so you've got to put it in setup. So if you want to make even the color of your stage or whatever they call it, uh, you've got to do that in a setup and set your fill in a setup function. Well, we have the generator being called here where we're bringing in various setups as well, and that allows us to style this, for instance, or apply you know, our normal parameters to it. But if we want to do a setup, we can, in setup, what you get is you get the generator shape. So we can initially translate to a certain location because we've started the generator in the middle. I'm not sure where processing starts, actually. I think they might start at top left corner. So we decided to, because most of the things that we're making that we're generating are rotational based in the center, we started in the center. If you want to go start on the left hand side, then you would translate there to start in the setup and then begin. So we're translating each time, we're rotating uh, between 
a min and a max. This is a zim v value of a min and a max. Now, one thing that's cool is we've created a series now, a series that also has a range. So you can, we could have made this a series like this. Well, right now, let's just take a look at this. And we've rotated the inner rectangle. So we've got an inner rectangle too. We're adjusting fill colors to a different color each time. It's getting a random color. We're pushing and popping. Um, we're translating it again. And so let's have a look and see what this gives us. Finally, if our translation goes too wide, then we uh, translate it down. So we move our drawing down and back, back to whatever we had done. Um, oh, this is going back and this is going down. And then if the Y is bigger than the stage, then we're stopping it. And what that gives us is this guy right here. Bloop. So you see how that didn't go really past the stage and didn't go past the stage height. It might have come close. I don't know. I didn't totally calculate it. And check our, our random rotations each time. So that's a rotation within a range. If we reduce the range, for instance, minus 2 to 2, this is on the outer rectangle only. Then we refresh here and we get a very uh, reduced angle on the outside. You could do the same with the inside one. But I wanted to try, let's see if this works, a series like so. And uh, we may as well go back to the 20 and the 20. And let's see if that's operating. So we're going to rotate starting at minus 20. The next one will be minus 19, minus, minus 18. As a matter of fact, we could step that by going dot step. Make it a little bit more. How about a 5 degrees? And let's see what happens. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to be going. I don't know. I can't tell. I think that's it. Yeah, it's, it's stuck in there. So what is it that we did wrong? This series maybe can't go right here. Rotate because we're, we're doing this each time. So our series of uh, our s is equal our rots we'll call them is equal to that series and let's try rotating it rots i don't know if that's it or not refresh here seven yeah that was it so there it is at minus 20 minus 20 or minus 18 or 5 minus 15 minus 10 minus 5 0 5 10 15 20 then it jumps back to minus 20. So if you don't want it to jump back, you can also bounce, dot bounce. I haven't tested bounce. <laughs> Let's see if that bounces back. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I really doubt it will. Uh, <laughs> so there it is going to zero, forward, forward, and yeah, I don't think it bounced because that should be a less thing. Right, so I haven't <clears throat> tested the bounce with the the series. We're going to have to look at that. Series was actually a little bit complicated to introduce into, or sorry, the min and the max here. A bit complicated to introduce into the current way that we had a series. Normally, if you have a series, it, it would be um, just a list of things. Like you can series an array, or you can just put a list of things in there, and it picks from them. But with a range, we might have a hundred things. We we're tempted to just hard code out the range. Say, oh, okay, you want a min and a max, we'll just create an array from that and do this huge array and then end up passing the array in. Then the rest of our code could have worked the same way. But we decided against that and instead we kept this um, uh, all as a min and a max throughout our, our pick arrangements and stuff. And it looks like the bounce isn't working. So we'll fix that up for you and get the balance working, but at least the step is working, and so is the min and max. We also want to look at, into why passing that directly into the fill here. Oh, now fill should receive a zim v value. It's in a loop. That's right. So if it is in a loop, it's fine to put an array in there of random things, because that doesn't matter. But if you want the series to work properly, you need to store the series out of the loop 
and then pass the uh, the zim v value of the series into that. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, each loop it's creating a new series. All right, great. Well, we looked at that one. Let's carry on here. Um, what's next? Stroke color green. Ooh, this is where we were making the maple leaf, I believe. This is the last one. Yeah, we're making the maple leaf. So we are setting record line points to true. And what that will do is each line that gets made, it will record a series of points. And then when it's done, down here is when it's done, on complete, we're going to create a blob and pass in the points. So that's the generator's line points property. We'll make a blob from those points. We put the blob on the generator so that we can remove the blob when we remove the, um, the pattern. Isn't that cool? Now the reason why we did this, let's go review this one again. The reason why we did this is right here. So there it is making those shapes and then in the end turn that into a blob is because when we make lines we have no closed path on those lines to fill in that. It just doesn't seem to work. We're not sure if it's CreateJS or a canvas thing with the it might have something to do with the way that the transforms are applied to the lines or something. But we can fill rectangles, we can fill circles, we can even fill curves, individually individual curves that are drawn, such as uh, this one. In This is a curve, Bezier, and that gets filled. No problem. But we can't fill a bunch of those with one fill. And so, uh, in this example where we've got these lines, we can't, even though they close the path, it won't fill. So we'll, we'll see if we can fix that up. But at the moment, a solution would be to record the points and then basically fill it with a blob, which has certain advantages. And that can be made interactive false, for instance. So we've got show controls false to start, but we can make it interactive false. And then we're dealing with A non-interactive blob so that's like a, a fill color. I wonder you could probably fill that as you go if you really wanted to <laughs> just do the make the blob in here or adjust the blob in here based on each time the line points. All right uh, inside of this generator right here we've got a translate we translated and initially we're making a maple leaf. Uh, we've got I don't know what we're doing there. We're remembering some starting point or a beginning point. There's this drawing a line that draws the stem. This is on count four. So this is how we're saying, oh, we're on generator four. Let's draw a stem. If we're otherwise, we're drawing that pattern. So that gives us the maple leaf pattern sort of. Uh, we, we drew this all as if it were facing to the, the right. So that gives us a line here, back, forward, back, or you know, whatever the maple leaf is looking like. <laughs> so uh, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. So as you can see when we draw this, that's one generation, that shape. So that's what that is. And then we're rotating that like so. Cool, huh? Alrighty, well that's a look into, oh, this last one is all done in a setup. So the last one is the recursive algorithm. So here it is, we only run a, a setup. We don't run the draw or the stamp. And then here's the function called branch, which is doing some pushes and pops in there. So basically it goes up. So that's this one right here. It goes up, it remembers where it is, the end here, then it draws off this way, then it goes back with a pop, then it remembers, push, and then it draws off this way, and uh, remembers back at this one, I think, or something like that. Then it's going in and doing these guys as well. That's why it's recursive. It then calls branch. So within both of these branches, that's the left and the right, it calls branch again, which with a smaller length. And so it will then run branch again with the smaller length, do the pushes and the pops 
on that branch and we could not figure out how to animate this so because it's sort of like going in and going all the way to the end we tried timeouts in here and that didn't work this ends up going in and all the way to the end and for the push and the pop to be remembered properly you can't put timeouts and then start trying other things and timeout comes back it'll be at a different push or a different pop and so it was like our i think you'd have to record the points here take in an array or in a nested loop of array you have to go to the very ends of the nested loop of arrays and work backwards and it's just like oh okay whatever <laughs> you guys can do that but we've stamped it all in the setup in a recursive and you can see how the pushes and the pops and the relative positioning are working there to create the, the famous uh, fractal diagrams and it's neat to be able to see to change various parameters like you could randomize this and you get beautiful tree drawings so uh, we've done that as well uh, it's very very nice all right what do you think woohoo this has been a what's bubbling for the generator we're uh, we're so excited to be able to to you know uh, it, generate things and it'll be a, a big plus for the generative art, once again, you can do things like this already in a in an interval. So this is in an interval. Imagine this: you just make a rectangle, a zim rectangle, and then the next one you rotate it like five degrees times i. So in your interval, you keep track of the count, or you actually get one. Or if you were in a loop, you would do the same thing: you would loop, and then based on i, you would rotate the rectangle five degrees, and you would get this exact pattern with you know. 80 rectangles or 70 rectangles or however many are here, 72. <laughs> See what I mean? But that's a whole bunch of Zim rectangles and there's other advantages to be able to sort of draw in different connections as you can see here. Um, well, that could have been done too. So we could do that. It's just, it's sort of handy to be able to do it with, uh, with this system right here where we're less worried about um, using I to increase rotations, we're just saying rotate 30 each. We don't have to say 30 times I. It's, it's sort of a little less thinking, and it's all in one shape. Now remember to access that shape afterwards, use the drawing property on it. So g.drawing will give you this nice shape that you can do whatever you want with. And let's leave it at that. This has been a What's Bubbling in Zimbuo. Come on in and join us at zimjs.com slash slack. We would love to hear from you there. We, we get new people every day uh, working on exciting things. Why not? It's fun and it's free. I tell you, I've been doing this for many years. I worked through Director. I worked through Flash. I've worked in HTML worlds. Um, this is the best it's ever been. Come on in and try it. It's just so much fun.